Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at a brand new tablet from Amazon. Yes, the company that sells you everything makes hardware too. We've looked at a bunch of tablets from them in the past and this is the new HD10, which is a 10 inch tablet running at 1080p starting at 150 bucks. Not a bad deal. Now, I do wanna let you know before we get into the main review that I purchased this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one has reviewed this content before I uploaded it. So let's get to it and take a deeper dive into what this tablet is all about. Now I mentioned this is a $150 device and uh, the reason why it is relatively inexpensive is that Amazon will put ads on your screen uh, if you go for the lower priced option. So if you pay another $20 or so, uh, you will not have those ads on screen. So those ads might appear uh, from time to time. I've never in the past found them to be all that intrusive. So if you really are looking to save some bucks, uh, you will get these targeted ads put up on your uh, device from time to time. Uh, this one with 32 gigabytes of storage, it again is 149 or 164 without the ads. Uh, you can also go up to a 64 gigabyte version for 189 with the ads, $204 without. Now they call this the HD10 because it has a 10.1 inch display. Uh, the display is full HD, it runs at 1900 by 1200, and it's an IPS display, meaning that it looks good even when you look at it from different angles. And for 150 bucks, it is a very nice display that does very well with video uh, because it is oriented for widescreen content like this. It doesn't do as well with text, in my opinion, just because it's a little narrower than I would like when you're uh, reading a magazine or a website or something like that. But uh, like I said, it really does a nice job with video here. The display seems bright enough to me, um, so it does feel competitive with other tablets that uh, might cost a little more money. Uh, weight on this one is 17.7 ounces, so it's just over a pound or 500 grams. Uh, one thing Amazon lists on their uh, specifications for this is that the weight and uh, overall dimensions might vary slightly based on where it is manufactured. So I think they are sourcing this hardware from uh, multiple manufacturers in China. Now, unlike their less expensive, smaller devices that have a 90-day warranty, uh, this one has a full one-year warranty. Now, inside, it's got a quad-core MediaTek processor. It is an MT8173. It also has a PowerVR GPU. It's a GX6250. Uh, if that doesn't mean much to you, I'll show you some stuff running on here so you can get a feel for uh, what its overall performance is a little later in the review. It also supports AC, wireless, and Bluetooth 4.1. Hardware-wise, there is not much to look at here. There are some stereo speakers on the bottom. They do have decent stereo separation, provided you're watching in widescreen mode here, but they are not very good speakers. They're kind of tinny. Uh, it is loud, but if you want better audio, what I would suggest doing is plugging in a pair of headphones to the headphone jack at the top. You got a volume rocker here. There's a USB port for charging. This is a micro USB port. They give you an adapter in the box, but you can also just plug it into any USB power source. And you've got a power button over here. Uh, battery life, Amazon says, is about 10 hours, and I would say you can probably get close to that. Uh, in my testing, I was looking at anywhere from eight and a half to nine hours, but I was really using the tablet and uh, running a lot of video and some game testing on it and whatnot also. So I think if you're playing a lot of games, you'll see less battery life than if you're watching videos and uh, browsing the web or something like that. So what you do with the tablet largely determines uh, the overall battery life, but it is on par with uh, other tablets that do get through most of a workday on there. And then on the other side here, they've got a little micro SD card slot underneath this door here. So you can put in a 256 gigabyte card to augment its onboard storage, which is a good thing. Uh, Amazon Video, of course, supports offline downloading from your Prime account, as does Netflix. So you can download a bunch of stuff on here and then uh, get on a plane, for example, and watch offline. Great feature, and it's good to have that card on there because that will certainly free up some uh, internal space for apps and whatnot. Now, one thing to keep in mind with these devices is that uh, this is an Amazon version of Android. So they uh, get the Android operating system through Google's open source program and then layer on top uh, their own interface to it. And as a result, you do not get the Google Play Store on here by default. So you have a bunch of apps that you purchase through uh, Google for an Android phone. Uh, those will not be immediately available on here. There are ways to install the Google Play Store on Amazon tablets because these are running Android, but uh, you will need to follow some directions. It's not all that complicated, but it might be uh, out of the realm of something a lot of consumers want to do. So if you are heavily invested in the Google Play Store, uh, there are ways to get it on here. They're not all that difficult, but uh, just 
know that there is a couple of extra steps to getting your uh, Android apps all to work on here. If you do buy your apps through Amazon, of course, you're uh, perfectly fine and you can actually run those Amazon uh, App Store apps on an Android device that is not made by Amazon. Complicated stuff, but uh, this is some of the issues you deal with with competing uh, platforms. Now, one thing though is that if you don't install the Google Play Store on here, you do not get the official YouTube apps. While you have official Netflix and Amazon Video and many other uh, service providers on uh, the Amazon App Store, YouTube is not one of them. So uh, you get a web wrapper essentially that uh, looks okay, but it's really just loading up a web-based version of YouTube's website as opposed to a specific app. And one last thing on the hardware before we look at some performance is the camera system. You've got a camera here on the back. It is only two megapixels, probably one of the worst tablet cameras I've seen in some time. So you are not going to be taking any good video or uh, photos with that one. Uh, the front facing camera is a 480p camera, pretty low resolution itself, but good enough perhaps for a video conference or something like that. But if you are looking for a tablet to take pictures with, this is not your device. It really does not do a very good job with that. Now, one of the cool things about the new tablet here is they have integrated Amazon voice commands into the mix. So I can at any time just walk up to the tablet and say, Alexa, tell me the weather in New York City tomorrow. And that, of course, will initiate Here's an Amazon uh, query here, York. just like it might Look do on a uh, other Amazon voice device like an Echo. And it gets you the information along with some graphics on screen. So if you saw that review we did of the Echo show where you get things on screen when you make a query, uh, same thing here. And you've got all the commands that you would get with any other Amazon Echo device. Now, what's really cool, though, as you'll see behind me, is that I have another Amazon Echo. And uh, if I make a request to the tablet, uh, the Echo knows that the tablet grabbed it. So watch this. Alexa, tell me the weather in Chicago tomorrow. And you can see behind me that the other tomorrow one shut itself Chicago, off. Illinois. So even though it did hear the trigger word, uh, the tablet said, hey, I'm closer, knock yourself off. So you do have to make sure these devices are on the same network, but there is some communication between them that happens very quickly. So you don't get the same uh, query answered twice. And another cool thing that it does is that if you have the tablet off and you make a query on a Echo device somewhere in your house, it will give you the on-screen notification here. So if I roll over to my Echo here and say, Alexa, tell me the weather in Chicago tomorrow. What will happen now is that it will go back to the tablet here. And even though the tablet was off, it'll turn it back on and put on this uh, little weather report here that I can scroll through. So it does do some stuff with these devices to make them act as uh, additional value added screens, even when they are off. There's probably going to be some kind of battery penalty for having it uh, sitting in standby like this. But I would imagine you could have this in the kitchen somewhere up on a little stand, maybe like this plugged in and charging. And then you'll get uh, this bonus stuff added every time you make a query on a another Echo device in the house. This again is another feature that can be disabled, but I thought it was kind of neat that it would have this uh, level of interaction behind the scenes where an Echo device can trigger your tablet to give you uh, some on-screen content to supplement what it's giving you with its voice. So let's take a look now and see how this thing performs. And we are going to begin with web browsing. Now on these Amazon Fire tablets, the default browser is called Silk, and it looks like this thing right here, and that will get you onto the web. So we're going to go visit nasa.gov here real quick and see how fast everything loads in. Pretty responsive. It is on my AC wireless network, so we are getting decent load times on here. And as you can see, it really renders the page and scrolls very nicely as you're navigating things. And we'll pull up an article here and just scroll down there. That looks pretty nice. Now, one issue that I have, though, with these widescreen tablets is that when you do switch the tablet into its vertical position, I've often found them to be a little too narrow for me for reading. Now, a 10-inch tablet like this is a little better just because uh, it is a larger screen, which does make it a little easier. But uh, you will, of course, not have the same width when you are in vertical position than you might on uh, a iPad, for example, or a similar tablet that has a different aspect ratio. But the trade-off is that when you are widescreen and watching movies on it, uh, you'll get more of the screen filled up with the video, which is something you don't get uh, on the iPad. But uh, reading is pretty decent on this. It doesn't work as well out in direct sunlight. So if you are a very heavy reader and have a lot of books purchased on the Amazon Kindle store, I think going with one of their e-ink or e-paper uh, Kindle devices is the better choice. But if you are doing a lot of video watching, this is probably the one you want to get. Now let's take a look at some game playing on this device. This is not a super fast tablet, but uh, most of the Android apps that are out there, including the ones sold on the Amazon App Store, are targeted at devices like this that are not all that quick, but 
uh, good enough for basic game playing. We've got uh, Minecraft here that seems to be running pretty nicely. This, of course, is the Android version of Minecraft that I purchased through the uh, Amazon App Store. So if you've got a kid that plays Minecraft, this might not be a bad way to get a, a decent Minecraft experience going here. We're also going to take a look at Goat Simulator, which is a game I've been having a lot of fun with on, Amazon, on Android and Amazon, for that matter. Uh, I use a game controller for this game sometimes, and it does uh, connect up very nicely with the tablet here. And we'll just hit the play button, and you can see how this works. And this is a Bluetooth controller, and haven't had any issues getting Bluetooth devices connected up to it. And as you can see here, the game uh, seems to be running very nicely. And it looks really sharp on this display. So we are uh, benefiting, of course, from that 1900 by 1200 full HD display as we uh, run around the world here. And it seems to be uh, pretty fast and responsive, so not too bad. Now, uh, the horsepower on this one is certainly not as fast as some other tablets that might be out there. I did run a benchmark called the 3D Mark Slingshot Test. And on that one, we got a score of 670, uh, which puts it on the lower end of the spectrum for some of the things that we look at. But uh, if you look at the next Amazon tablet down from this one, the HD8, which is an 8-inch tablet, uh, that one scored 232. So this one is certainly a bit faster than that one. Now, the fastest tablet I've tested to date, of course, is the NVIDIA Shield K1 tablet. Uh, that one scored 3,227. Look at the difference there. Uh, but that one is no longer manufactured, unfortunately. It only cost about $200 with an 8-inch display, but uh, unfortunately, there just doesn't seem to be a lot of apps that are demanding that much power, which is why uh, you're able to get away with uh, something like this. It doesn't cost all that much, yet can still run a good chunk of the available apps that are on the market. Now, one other thing I tested here, just because this is something I know people are interested in, is uh, a cord cutting application. And I have an HD home run in my house. And in full disclosure, the company that makes that device is an occasional sponsor here on the channel. But uh, what that does is it allows me to tune my uh, live television on uh, tablets like this one or computers throughout my house and even set-top boxes. And uh, one thing this tablet doesn't do is de-interlace video. This is an issue we saw with the uh, Amazon Fire TV stick. So I'm seeing some lines, some jaggedy lines going on here from over-the-air broadcast that you might encounter with a similar setup to what I have here. And it looks like uh, this one may not do very well as a little portable TV throughout your house. So uh, just keep in mind, it does not, at least in hardware, uh, do de-interlacing, which the HD Home Run app relies on uh, hardware to do. And again, that was an issue we saw uh, with the inexpensive Fire TV stick a little while ago. But overall, I think it's a pretty decent value for the price. It's a nice tablet, beautiful display. It really looks quite nice on here. Having the uh, A word uh, being, a, being there to uh, enable voice commands for uh, the rest of your home automation that you might be doing through the Amazon Echo stuff is great. And it really seems to work pretty nicely here. I like that second screen experience for uh, when the device is off and another Echo device triggers off in the house. So lots of good stuff here and a very nice little tablet from Amazon and one I think I can recommend if you are uh, invested in the Amazon ecosystem and looking for something uh, nice but inexpensive. And that is what uh, this one definitely achieves. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, John Prawl, William Miller, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.